In today's video, we're going to look at rebuilding the Carter WO carburetor. This is the most common uh, carburetor option on a CJ2A. We're going to be using parts from Kaiser Willys, as well as referencing these two incredible books that I got from Kaiser Willys. This is the service manual, and it has in-depth um, diagrams, breakdowns, troubleshooting. I mean, literally everything on your Jeep can be found in this book. I wish I had this a lot sooner. We're also going to use the Carter um, Ordnance Maintenance Book from the U.S. Army and Air Force, December 1952. This thing is awesome as well. I have this bookmarked at the WO section, and you can see it has um, excellent illustrations. It explains every part of the carburetor and how it works, what it does, everything like that, as well as tuning and troubleshooting. So I can't say enough for how um, nice these publications are. And uh, we'll be looking at them a lot throughout this video. These carburetors are designed very really simple and you don't really need a lot of special tools. So you can see just basic stuff here. The only thing unique is gonna be some type of tool to pop out the um, block off plugs. So this is just a piece of steel ground into a fork. Carter makes an actual tool for this, but if you're like me you can get uh, pretty creative with what you have laying around. And a brass punch that I um, turned a little dimple on the end for driving the uh, plugs back in. But you can really use any kind of drift. Um, these are just things I made to make life a little bit easier. Just wanted to take a moment and show you some of the offerings that Kaiser Willis has for the Carter WO. So over here, there's the part number. This is the basic uh, tune-up kind of light rebuild kit. So it has all the new gaskets, uh, accelerator pump, all the common um, wear items in your carburetor, new spring, uh, and things like that. But it's more of the... Uh, basic kit. The master kit includes things that you wouldn't normally find in a regular carburetor kit. So this has uh, a lot more hardware and hard parts um, like your you know linkages, your metering rod, every little clip and these little vacuum port plugs as well. If you really want to do a deep clean full rebuild on your carburetor uh, the master kit is a great choice. Another thing I like to do, you've seen me do it before, is anything you're not 100% sure on, just take some photos of all the different sides, the screw locations, you know, different size screws go in different places, uh, how the linkages are attached. Make sure you have a clean workspace with something that you can lay your parts on where they won't roll away or blow away. I like having a magnetic bowl. Okay, let's get started. If you are just doing the tune-up kit, you won't have to take apart as much of the carburetor um, as I'm going to today. We're gonna strip this down to um, every last moving part, including all the different plugs and all the linkage is going to come off. If you're just doing the tune-up kit, you can pretty much just remove this piece of linkage that connects the two bodies together. So you'll see when this slides off. So now we can disassemble um, the top from the bottom and remove the bowl and things like that. But we're gonna dig deep into this um, and tear the entire thing apart. If your Jeep was running pretty well, but you know it needs rebuilt, but you were happy with your settings, so like on this pilot screw here, um, good idea to count the turns and make a reference for that so you can kind of have a good starting point when you put it back together so anytime you're doing that with a jet or a needle so you just note the position of the screwdriver and you count the turns in to stop so there's one and about one and three quarter you don't want to reef on it you'll feel it kind of just stop and that's when you know to back off so this one was set to one and a th or one and three quarters turn from stop once you've made a note of that you can just back it out and remove it yeah see that's looking a little grody and put it in your pile of parts We're just going to continue on removing everything. Little clip and little springs, all these goodies. Keep all your parts together and keep chugging away. So this longer rod here connects the main throttle shaft to the metering rod and the accelerator pump. So 
Um, we want to make sure to remove that before we can split these sides anymore. So very straightforward. Just pop these little pins out. And like I said, they like to go flying. Thankfully, uh, the new kit does include them. So um, this clip down on the bottom here, you just spin it forward and it will slide out like that. And you have to rotate it up past the carb body and then slide it out. Once you have the four uh, screws over the bowl removed, this gasket um, is really the only thing holding it together. You really want to avoid um, prying too hard on these because you'll end up marring the surface. Um, also don't strike this with a hammer. So your best bet is to just try to do it by hand and sometimes just a little wiggle and a little tap and it'll start to come apart. There we go. So you really don't want to be too rough with any of these because everything's old and delicate and uh, but once it starts moving you should be able to just slide this right up there we go so the only thing that was really resisting is this uh, accelerator pump um, it's kind of like a piston so these rings are a little tight and you can see i've got some corrosion here that was preventing that from from sliding so now we'll get to see what condition everything is in now that things are starting to come apart um, smells like old gas. I would call this a uh, pretty typical um, kind of favoring good, <laughs> good side. So it's not a lot of corrosion and not a lot of junk, but definitely uh, you wouldn't want to just throw gas in here and try to run this thing. So if you can see this stuff here, that's the stuff that when you start up an old Jeep after it's been sitting for a long time, that will plug the tiny little ports and passages in here and then you'll wonder why it doesn't run right. So we're just kind of setting everything aside um, in the order that we take it out so be very careful with your float. Uh, the float can be ordered separately but it does not come with the rebuild kit. It's, unless it's damaged or compromised it's not really a, a wear item. This should be fine, but we'll check it before we reinstall it. So the float shaft just pulls out by hand. They love to roll away, so I'm gonna put it in there on the magnet. Um, if you shake your float and you hear liquid in it, that's a bad sign. Also, if you take it apart and it is crushed, that is a bad sign as well. So it should be nice and plump. I do have some corrosion here, so we'll clean that up and make sure there's no hole in it. Um, uh, like I said, these are available, but Nine times out of ten, you can reuse your float. Just be gentle with it. Take all the gaskets out. Inside here is your needle and seat. These actually look in pretty good condition. So we're just going to slowly chip away, taking everything apart um, until we're just left with kind of a bare housing. So to remove the metering rod from this linkage, um, you'll notice there's some play in it, so you don't want to bend it. So get this linkage in a position where it can slide like that without bending it. Then take a little pick or a screwdriver and pop the spring off like that and it should be able to wiggle it right out. But you want to be gentle with this because if this gets bent uh, you're going to have issues. If you're not reusing it, you don't have to be as careful, but if the, uh, you know, some of these, we're going to replace everything, but this might be good to keep around as a spare for an emergency. Take note of how the washer and spring are on there, and if you're just doing the um, basic rebuild kit, you can stop there. We really don't need to take any of this apart further than that. Next up we're going to remove the needle and seat. That's these two little guys. That's what uh, controls the flow of fuel into the bowl. So just get a big uh, chonky flathead and spin that out. And it should look like that. This one still has the washer, a little gasket intact. And we'll set that with our parts. So this piece right here just needs some cleaning, but it's pretty much disassembled as far as we need it to be. Other than uh, the master kit does come with a new spring and this little washer here. Let's continue on to the middle section of the carburetor. So you'll notice um, we have two pieces that are cast aluminum. 
or kind of like a pot metal. I don't know if it's really aluminum or not. So those are the two upper part uh, pieces of the carb, and then we have this cast iron lower piece. So pop in here and dig out this little spring so you don't lose it. That's the only thing that's in that cavity. Inside here is the jet that the uh, metering rod goes into. Just another flat head. And we'll pop that out. Put it out here and remove this larger plug. Generally, these come apart uh, fairly easily. The only time you really have trouble with stripped out screws and stuff is if it sat with no hood on it for a long period of time or something like that. Okay, underneath that plug is a small jet, so you'll need to get in there with a flat head. And again, there's no adjustment there. These are all just screw them in until they're tight. Okay, so you can see how gunked up that is. That's the stuff that uh, causes problems. So we're going to address all of that. Looking down from the top, there's another jet in here. Going to need a smaller screwdriver. Try to make sure you're using uh, the best fit screw, best fitting screwdriver you have for each jet because they are brass and sometimes they're really stuck and it's very easy to round them off. And then like if you get that rounded off to where you can't get it out down inside there, it's very hard to remove. So very crusty some varnish build up on it so that little guy comes out of there and it's always a good idea to just take a flashlight and take a peek in there because uh, you never know when there's a little spring or a ball or anything like that hiding out and you don't want it to uh, get lost or forget the location so I think that's everything out of the top of there look at this gross gross liquid coming out here Okay, pop that little guy out. That thing is completely plugged, so it's good that we got that out. And I don't believe there's any type of washer or anything in there, so that's done. And there's a, another one up in this hole. Having the correct screwdriver is key. Um, I like this screwdriver, but this flare on the blade uh, makes it not ideal for these because you don't want to be grinding into the threads so you want to get a straight shank screwdriver spin this little guy out once you get it broken loose then you can usually grab it with a smaller screwdriver okay another little jet lots of little pieces inside this little tube here on the side of the middle housing there's an angled portion that comes up into the main body of the carburetor there's a little um, piece in here that we have to remove so the way I like to do it is take a sheetrock screw you usually don't even need a screwdriver to do this just by hand get it in there as tight as you can and then give it a wiggle and you'll feel something pop loose you might have to go back in again and there you go so notice there's uh, a little washer and this piece so this one's pretty crusty and the master kit comes with a new one and a new washer as well if you're just doing the tune-up kit you're going to skip this part um, we're going to remove the little vacuum block off plugs before you ever take a plug out make sure you have a new one to put back in because these are not reusable um, often people to try to reuse them and sometimes you can get away with it but they're they're pressed in and that that creates a seal when you pull them out they're just aluminum they are a one-time use item so don't ever take a plug out unless you can confirm that you have the correct plug uh, to put back in so there are six plugs, uh, one, two, three, four on that side, and two over here on this side. So um, we're going to take each one and make sure we have the right one to put back in. 
we'll pop it out, set the old ones aside, and then uh, get ready to reinstall the new ones. To remove the plug, um, there is a special tool, like I mentioned earlier, uh, but this is just a ground piece of steel that I ground uh, into a bit of a fork. It has to have a sharp edge to cut into the aluminum. So you can make something like this. If you have really good uh, pair of pliers, sometimes you can grab them. As long as you have the plug to go back in, we're not worried about damaging it. You do not want it to break off and snap off the head. Some of them you can drive them all the way through. Some of them you uh, are not able to do that. So they really aren't in there that hard. If you just give them a little tap and I'm prying out as I tap and that's it. So there's your plug. We will um, match it up with the new plug and confirm that we have that one and we're good to go. So now what that did was that opened up this port and will enable me to uh, use compressed air or carburetor cleaner to really make sure all the passages are clear. So these are little vacuum ports and things like that. They need to be clear of um, all this goop that's in there. So it's just as simple as that. I'm gonna go around to the rest of them and just pop them out. Ain't nothing to it. As you can see, they're really not in there that hard. Doesn't take a ton of force. If you don't have the right tool, um, not saying that I recommend it, but you can always kind of, you know, tap it in behind there. Just uh, we, you don't want to uh, damage this surface. It needs to be flat because it seals on the inner diameter, but also the head of it helps seal as well. So just really try not to uh, get too carried away with the screwdriver and the hammer. One more chunky plug on the bottom. with another gasket and this will have our little filter screen in there the master kit comes with a new one of these and that is a generally a much needed item then there is another jet up in there that one came out nicely we're getting there I know it seems like a lot but um, it's it's not a not that hard so there's another a um, little piece to set out there and there should be yet another up inside there well, that was it Oop, there we go just take your time I have a headlamp on right now because even with this uh, light for the camera I still can't see up in every little nook and cranny and sometimes the stuff won't want to come out because there is gunk in there. Sometimes if you just keep spinning it, there we go. Oh, that one tried to run away on me. And that is full of junk. So good thing we're replacing that too. All the plugs are out. All the jets are out. This top part is a part as far as I can take it. Um, the kit did not come with this plug, so I'm not going to remove it. But I can spray in through here and that passage comes down to the bottom of the bowl there so we'll, we'll ensure that you know with compressed air and some carb cleaner uh, that that is clear but that's why we check because um, you can order these separately probably through Carter but this probably isn't a necessary one uh, since the master kit didn't come with that plug so don't take that one out or you won't have anything to replace it with the cast iron base um, there's really not a whole lot going on in here we already counted the turns on the uh, idle pilot uh, that's the idle air screw um, we'll remove the gaskets there's a spacer and two gaskets should be um, so we'll just set those to the side to remove the idle air circuit plug um, you don't need a special tool for that because we're dealing with cast iron and copper and they give you a little bit of a, a lip here to get underneath it so you can generally just pop it out with a screwdriver you need to flip it over and get it from the other side um, the tool I have is a little too small for that one so pop that out and that's what it looks like and a little cast iron or a little pipe plug here on the side 
so that was really loose I didn't even touch that so you don't want air leaking in there if you want to tear this down even further to check um, the tolerances on the throttle shaft you can the uh, master kit comes with all the new screws for the little butterfly valve um, but to remove the throttle shaft we just take off this screw here and remove the two butterfly screws and it will slide through from the other side this one shows a little bit of wear I really can't feel it so that's a good sign but you can see um, some of the plating is wearing off so if that's too loose what will happen is it will create a, a vacuum leak um, through this little hole so there's a tiny bit of movement but not too bad so um, we're going to reuse this shaft and uh, I think it'll be just fine. We're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. This is pretty easy part here because there's really not a lot of moving parts in it. I'm going to use compressed air first and blow through all these little ports. Uh, clean up the gasket mating surfaces and then give each uh, little opening a blast with carburetor cleaner. And then we'll put the shaft back in and start reassembly.